Good morning, and it's time for another Answers with Artifexian. As always, if you've not watched the previous two videos, none of this is going to make any sense. So go check those out. Links in all the usual places. Would the climate zones always need to be very linear? For example, the northern edge of the big desert is nearly a straight horizontal line. How much wiggle room can we reasonably get away with when it comes to latitude? There is a lot of wiggle room, but that wiggle room should be dictated by terrain. Like the reason why my world is so linear when it comes to climates is, well, many things, but one, it's in its supercontinent phase. It hasn't got very many mountain ranges. And of those ranges, very few, if any, I think, run north to south. All of this means that on my world, there are large expanses of uninterrupted land, all of which is at the same kind of altitude. This necessarily breeds linear continents. Like you can see this happen with North Africa and the western portion of North America, all the climates there are super linear. So if your world has more continents, smaller continents, more mountain ranges, more north-south mountain ranges, and you follow the same guidelines, necessarily your world is going to come out very not linear, just by virtue of rain shadows and the moderating effect of oceans. And you can kind of see this in my world, like the main landmass, super linear. But down here, where you have like smaller land masses-ish, the climates are much less linear. Are you going to do something about alpine regions? Now, I said before, I didn't want to do video request questions because they don't lead to conversation or education, but this one's on topic, so I'll, I'll break my rule a little bit. Yes, I would love to do a video about the climate zones in mountainous regions. I've done some initial research and it's not very fruitful, so don't hold me to it but I'm interested. How big should rain shadows be? So the taller the mountain, the more expansive the rain shadow, the shorter the mountain, the smaller the rain shadow. As to what sizes in particular, let your artistic creativity drive that. Um, I hate to ask, but did you forget to add an ice cap to your southern polar region? Nope, there is no landmass down south, so no ice caps. Now I could have mapped in things like sea ice, but I thought that might've been a little bit confusing. People would think there is land there when it's not. There is this little island, however, and it is indeed a ice cap island. 37 seconds, you said that you were going to finesse the humid continental region later. Did you forget to come back to that? I thought you were going to show us how to determine between the forested regions and the prairie regions. So by finessing, I meant that we put all the other climate zones on top of the humid continental climate, and that will naturally constrain it into its correct latitudes. In terms of where the forests and where the prairies will be, remember the forested regions will be wetter and the prairie regions will be drier. So think back to the first video in this series, what produces high precipitation and what produces low precipitation. Find suitable areas in this zone and hey presto, you got your forests and you got your prairies. So Mediterranean climates need cold currents. How come there are Mediterranean climates around the Mediterranean Ocean, which is pretty warm? Okay, so a couple of things here. Cold currents aren't necessarily cold in the absolute temperature sort of sense. Cold currents are currents that transport cooler water into warmer regions. So a cold current in the tropics is very different to a cold current in the polar regions, but they're all doing the same thing, transferring cooler water to warmer regions. Second thing, the cold current is tied to Mediterranean climate, not because it's cold, but because it's dry and Mediterranean climates need dry conditions. And thirdly, if you look at it, you'll see that there aren't just Mediterranean climates around the Mediterranean Ocean. There's a whole host of climates. Regardless though, why are there Mediterranean climates at all around the Mediterranean? Now remember, I have not researched this, this is just me thinking off the top of my head, so don't take my word for it. But I would imagine that the Mediterranean Ocean is capable of creating currents. Those currents may be large enough for heat transfer to occur. I reckon that would be a small effect. I reckon the much more dominant effect would be that of the horse latitudes, the subtropical ridge. So the subtropical ridge lies just below the Mediterranean Ocean and it's a high pressure zone, so it's really dry. We need dry conditions and it will move north and south throughout the year. So that will supply the Mediterranean Ocean or the Mediterranean Basin with the necessary dry uh, conditions to give rise to Mediterranean climates. At least that's what I think. Have a look through comments and see if anyone disagrees with me. Why did you include some transitional zones and not others? You ignored humid hemiboreal, mild Mediterranean, subpolar oceanic, and extreme subarctic. Short answer, to keep things simple, long answer. So if you go to the Köppen climate classification system Wikipedia page, you'll see a couple of things. One, you'll see that there's about 30-ish 
uh, climate zones. You'll notice that these climate zones have letter titles, usually three letters, more on that in a bit. And you'll notice that if you start clicking through them, Wikipedia, like many other sources, tends to group them into more macro climates with smaller subdivisions. And that's what I did. I went for the macro climates over too much minutia. When I said place your humid subcontinental climates, I was encompassing all of these climates within that zone. D here meaning humid subcontinental, S meaning dry summer, W meaning dry winter, F meaning no dry season, I think, A meaning hot summer, and B meaning warm summer. So like the only distinction between a DFA climate and a DFB climate is that the summers are slightly cooler. So my choice was to ignore that kind of thing. Now, if you want to include this sort of thing, feel free to go to Wikipedia and read all about the various subtypes and see if you can include them in your climate maps. I think you'll really quickly run into everyone's favorite or least favorite climate zone, CSC. I, th I think it's CSC, hold, hold on a second. Yeah, CSC. This is a variant on the Mediterranean climate that has cold summers, which is only found in very small areas of Oregon, Washington, and California. Once you hit that subtype, you're gonna to think to yourself, do I really need to include all 30? And the answer is no. So again, that's what I went with here, sort of broad categories. And remember, the reason why we're making these climate maps is that say if we wanna set a story in a certain area, we want to know sand, jungle, the forests with the big leaves, the forests with the needles, grasslands, ice, etc. We don't necessarily want to know something like the forest with the big leaves that's hot or not so hot. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, those were some A's to your Q's. I hope you had a marvelous time. See you all next time for part three of my climate series. Until next time, Edgar out.